わざー That was from the movie, you know, that Emma and I was. Anyway, hey, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy TWX27 in the building. So, today I want to talk about Ant Man and the Wasp. I'll admit, it was a good movie. Yeah, it was um, not only as good as the first one, but it was still good. The thing is, my only issue with this movie is that I feel like it was going towards like more of a comedy direction. I mean, I know, like, in the other movie, there were some funny moments in Ant Man, but I feel like the purpose of this one was just to be funny because the thing with me, I can easily tell when someone's trying to be funny. Like, I can sense it. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind the comedy. I thought it was okay, but most of the scenes, it just felt a bit forced. I don't know, Scott Lang slash Paul Rudd, he didn't really make me laugh as much in this movie. I'll admit, I liked Lewis's comedy. He, he was like, really funny. Especially when he does his, like, story time. Like, okay, so this thing just happened and uh, somebody said, uh, I don't know, he talks too fast. But it was funny. I feel like most of the comedy came from him, even though like, you know, Scott Lang's also a comedian and there was some comedy as well. And also one like when his suit just malfunctions and he just grows and just hits his head on the roof. That was hilarious. And also the um when he was small and how he was just running in that blue in that blue jumper, that was funny. I'll admit there were some really funny moments in this film. Yeah, I enjoyed the funny moments. <laughs> Especially with Lewis. Man, Lewis, legend, legend. Love that guy. However, I do feel like most of the humor in the film wasn't really, like, knowing Marvel, they do, like, tend to throw in some cheeky quips or funny moments. But the one here, I don't know, it, it just felt a bit forced. It's as if it was aiming to be a comedy. I mean, I don't mind it taking that direction, but at the same time, like, you kind of want to see some of the seriousness of this film. So, basically, the whole purpose of this uh, film was to... Okay, so... Hank and Hope, they created this machine to go into this dimension called the Quantum Realm. And they wanted to go there to basically get Hope's mom slash Hank's wife back. And, uh, yeah, that's basically what they were aiming to do. But this, um, actually there are two villains. Ghost and, uh, the, the Texas-sounding guy, Southern guy. I, I forget his name. Ghost basically wants the machine. That way she can cure herself because, like... Years ago, an experiment went wrong, like, you know, with her dad, and then she went to go, like, see him off or something, just to see how he's doing, and then, kaboom, and then this happened to her. If you really think about it, she wasn't, like, it, it, it's hard to describe, like, I guess she was the villain, but, like, her story and, like, like, what happened, like, you kind of, you know, sympathize with her and get it. And, uh, and you know, like, she does become the good guy, you know, in the end, so, so, yeah. Oh, uh, is it Lawrence Fishburne or Randy? Okay, something Fishburne, he's, like, guy from Blackish. When I saw him with Ghost, I thought he was the villain, but then later on, I realized that he wasn't really the villain, he was just trying to help her out. Okay, let's talk about the post-credits. I have to be honest, the post-credits is my favorite scene throughout the whole movie. Well, except the one with the ants, that was just stupid. Like, the thing is, the last, last credit scene, it's basically just the ants in the drum, and we see that so many times in the trailers, and you just wonder, what is the point? I just sat down through four minutes of credits to wait for that, something I've seen in the trailer, are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. Okay, on to the real post credit scene. All right, so, uh, Scott, he's going into the quantum realm to, like, get some stuff for, uh, for Ghost, and, He's basically stuck there now because, you know, Thanos snapped his fingers and now Hank, Janet, and Hope are gone. Like, this is the thing, like, when I saw him disappear, I was like, No, them too? Like, okay, yeah, you may, it may seem like I'm surprised, but the thing is, I was actually annoyed. Yeah, part of me was, like, surprised. Like, I wasn't too surprised because I knew the post-credits would be a connection to Infinity War. But I was annoyed. I was annoyed because the reason is the whole purpose of this movie was to basically get the mother back. And then at the end, she disappears. It just makes you wonder, well, what was the whole point of the movie then? The whole movie should have just been the post-credits. That's just how I feel. I mean, I can't believe it. They went through all that trouble. They went through all of that trouble to get her out, for her to disappear at the end. Just makes you wonder, you know, just... 
I mean, why didn't they just keep Scott and the mom? If they had done that, I wouldn't have mind. I mean, I have nothing against Hank and Hope, but if Scott and Janet would have stayed, it would have been okay because, you know, she would have still been there and the whole mission of the movie would have still been completed. But then she disappears at the end. Like, what the heck? I don't get it. I just don't get it. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next video. Peace out. <laughs> it's not unusual to go out with anyone. It's not unusual. Oh, this one I can do.